Ceci n'est pas un papier. Magritte and Freudian Dream Analysis. Imagination, the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Introduction. René Magritte, the surrealist artist from Belgium, was a master of imagination. He was often called an imagier, meaning image maker, rather than just a painter because image is so close to imagination. Roman Jacobson, a structural linguist who has examined many of Magritte's images, said, Magritte is a surrealist in his vision, but a realist in his mimetic rendering of ordinary objects which he transforms into the marvelous. Imagine one of Magritte's most popular paintings, Golconda, which depicts a horizon line of buildings with red roofs, with men floating in the sky and along the plains behind and in front of the buildings. The men Magritte painted are standing straight and immobile, in plain black business suits wearing bowler hats on their heads. They are all facing different directions and change size as they move back in space and perspective. Each object in this piece, taken alone, is not unusual. However, Randa Dublick asserts that, metaphorically speaking, these anonymous men are as indistinguishable as raindrops. It not only defies gravity, but presents the kind of image commonly experienced in dreams. Magritte masterfully subverts reality by executing realism and true perspective to depict scenes in which the laws of natural universe are suspended. Many of these scenes painted by Magritte are so intriguing and appealing because they are of realistically rendered normal objects that happen to be set in a confused relationship with space and gravity. Magritte seems to effortlessly create these contemplative scenes which more closely pattern after the dream world than any other surrealist artist. But he differs from the rest of the surrealists, who are heavily influenced by Freudian dream analysis, in that Magritte would reject the notion that the symbols in his work should be analyzed in a semiotic framework. Magritte was thought of as the most paradoxical of all surrealists, while many other artists at the time chose to purposefully make their lives scandalous. He lived a quiet and seemingly uneventful life. He married his childhood friend, Georgette Berger, and remained married to her his entire life. He was said to have hated traveling and that the only thing that changed in his life was the drive of his imagination. Many of the surrealist artists and poets of the time gathered in France and were a part of the international surrealist movement. Magritte joined for a time but ultimately returned to his beloved homeland. Magritte's prerogative with his paintings is compared to the belief that it has been shown in our time that everything in the physical world is relative to an observer, and that the spatial and temporal properties of physical occurrences are in large part dependent upon the observer. It was an unwelcoming notion to Magritte that artists needed to abide by the physical laws of the world. He disagreed with artist Marcel Duchamp's implication that the value of these laws was definite and unchanging. For example, in the aforementioned Golconda, it is unclear to the viewer if the men are stuck in the sky or in motion, possibly falling down or rising up. The probability function, which was introduced by Heisenberg, describes almost perfectly Magritte's images, where something is standing between possibility and reality. Early life and upbringing. The early personal life of Magritte has been argued by many, and the facts are still unclear about the circumstances surrounding his mother's death. Many of Magritte's paintings have been analyzed based on the uncertain details that his mother committed suicide in a river. It is said that at age 13, Rene was there to witness his mother being pulled from the waters and that the cloth from her dress covered and obscured her face. Many of the subjects in Magritte's paintings have cloth covering their faces, such as The Lovers, which has drawn direct parallels to the tragic events of his childhood. Other psychologists and psychiatrists have researched and attempted to explain how the tragic experiences he encountered as a child have fueled the peculiarities of his vision. Introduction to Freudian Dream Analysis Surrealist theory was based on a simplistic understanding of the writings of Sigmund Freud, recrafted for the use of poets and visual artists. Thanks to surrealism, Freud became popularized in the 1930s and his impact upon the artists in Paris in the 1920s. According to his book, The Interpretation of Dreams, Freud's dream analysis can be understood simply by looking at what he called manifest content versus latent content. Manifest content refers to the little images and experiences we have and see in a dream. Latent content refers to hidden meanings, drives, and desires embedded in those images and experiences. 
The Surrealists, too, wanted to tap into the subconscious as a repository of subject matter for their art, and as a new way of seeing into the human side of art. Magritte's work, on the other hand, wasn't so classically Freudian. He said, quote, People who look for symbolic meanings fail to grasp the inherent mystery of the image. No doubt they sense this mystery, but they wish to get rid of it. They are afraid. By asking, what does this mean, they express a wish that everything be understandable. But if one does not reject the mystery, one has quite a different response. One asks other things. Compared to the art of other surrealists steeped in Freudian symbolism, contemporarily, Magritte's work is being recognized as simply humorous or interesting. The modern audience for Magritte's work is not attempting to dissect and understand why he painted what he did, or its meaning. The dream world Magritte created may seem effortless, but it still leaves us curious and contemplative, which in part accomplishes his goal as he would have it. (laughs) ¶¶